Hey everyone, welcome to the Test Driven Development in React stream, uh, mega stream today. Uh, I'm on PTO and for the holidays for US Thanksgiving, and I just decided to stream like crazy, so we're going to be here for a while. Um, I was getting a bit concerned with the holidays coming up that I wouldn't be able to get to a good stopping point with this series that we're in, and I really wanted to get into building out the state management layer of the app and connecting to a backend API, because that's when testing and test driven development can get kind of complex, but there's a lot of power in there as well. So hopefully we'll be able to make some good progress on that today. Never streamed for this long, so we'll just see what happens. We'll see if my voice holds out. Uh, we'll see how many bathroom breaks come up. Uh, we'll see what happens. I got Mountain Dew here to power me, as I always have. Um, so I think we'll be good. So let's do a bit of a recap for anybody who is new here, who hasn't joined in before. We're building an app. It's called Opinion 8. You can get to it here in my GitHub repo under React TDD live stream. Um, and you can follow along with what we're doing, what we're building. Um, so this app lets us track restaurants and lets us track uh, dishes that we like to rate them at these restaurants. And that's what we're building out one step at a time using test-driven development. We're using Cypress for our end-to-end -end tests, and we're using Jest with React Testing Library for our component tests. Um, by the way, if you are on the chat, uh, please say hello. Um, I love to interact with folks on the chat. And if you are watching this and recording later, please hit me up on React to Flux uh, on the testing channel or on Twitter at Coding It Wrong. Uh, I love talking about testing. Would love to hear what your experiences are. If you have any questions, if you've tried things differently and it works for you, I'd love to hear about it. So let's talk about where we're at here. Um, and if we open up Cypress, we have see we have two end-to-end -end tests, adding a restaurant and then adding a dish to that restaurant. If we pull up Cypress, we can run the whole suite at the same time. We hit run all tests. We can see that adding a dish works and then adding a restaurant has got a few more different things going on with the modal and it passes as well. So it would seem like everything is good. Like we're adding a restaurant, we're adding a dish, we're done with these two features. But if you followed along for the last stream and you saw what uh, happened and uh, what we built, um, there could have been a pretty obvious error and problem that was coming up there. Uh, and let's uh, take a look at the code first, because it's definitely okay uh, in test-driven development to look at the code. It's, it's okay to think. Test-driven development is not about not thinking. Um, it's about kind of guiding and focusing your thoughts. So if we look at the implementation here of the restaurant detail page, um, we can see that we have um, a list of dish names stored in the state. And we add, when we add a dish to it, we just add that into the state. So it should be pretty clear if you think about this for a second that this is not gonna work ultimately. This component state will go away once we go off the restaurant detail page and it's not stared, uh, stored there permanently. And although we, um, I think on the page, we are referencing the passed in uh, restaurant, let's see. Uh, and actually this is a little bit of a side note here. Let's rerun this adding a dish test. Yeah, actually, there's not any info on that page about the passed in restaurant. But so even if we passed in the restaurant, like the point remains that this state is just transient and it's going away as soon as we switch off of here. So that's problematic. So like it's clear that this is a problem and you don't have to write a test or test drive everything. But let's think about if we wanted to. If we wanted to have an end to end test that would cover this problem and would drive it out, what could we do? The way to think is from any test, whether you're writing an end to end test or a component test, um, you think about from the outside of the thing, the system you're testing. So from the outside of our system, what's the evidence of this architectural problem that we have? So let's take a look at our adding a dish spec. We have some functions in here within the test. We add a restaurant and we go to the restaurant page. We confirm that the modal is not shown at the start and then we confirm that the modal allows adding a dish. And so we uh, click save new dish button and we ensure the page contains the dish name. All right, well, like what, what would we do? What would the user do to show the problem here? Uh, well, what we could say is um, uh, dishes retain when leaving the screen, uh, leaving the page. So the idea, in caps lock? Yeah, there we go. So the idea here is we wanna test to make sure that when we leave that page and go back to it, the dishes are still retained, like the same dishes we've entered before are still shown. Um, so let's write out this test and see if this works to help expose the problem that we have. Remember the test-driven development cycle. We want to go red, green, refactor. We want to write a failing test, red, and then we want to write the code that passes it, green, and then we want to refactor to that to uh, improve the code. So let's write out this, this part of the test, these steps to confirm that the dishes are retained when leaving the page. So let's write that. I'm not sure what variables will be needed yet, so we'll just kind of come back to that. Um, 
so we're on this page, like we we're on the the new the the blah, 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 blah. Uh, we're on the restaurant page. Where the heck is it? Yeah, we yeah we go. We go to the restaurant page. So we're on the restaurant page. So we want to get back off this page and then come back. So we can do a cy dot get data test ID. We just call it back button, not the browser back button, but a back button on the page. So we click some kind of back button to go back home, um, and then we click the restaurant name again. Uh, so this be step, find the element of the page that contains the restaurant name and click. And our linter is helpfully telling us we don't have that variable. So I'm going to pass in the restaurant name here. And this uh, is just a helpful step to um, kind of show the flow of the information through these testing functions. Um, as a reminder, I mentioned it last time on Friday on the stream. It's been so few days since I streamed. But my friend Jay Hayes, who taught me about feature tours in the first place, wrote a blog post about feature tours to explain how we're structuring the test here. So check it out at iamvery.com if you want to learn more about why we're structuring the test this way. So we're going back to the first page of the app, then we're clicking the restaurant name again, and then we're just gonna check once more that it contains that dish that we created. And again, the dish name needs to be passed in. So we'll pass it in there, we'll pass it in there. And I think this will be our red test. This will help us uh, show the problem. So we're gonna run just the adding a dish test. It's gonna, Cypress is gonna launch it in Chrome. It's gonna start. It's waiting, it's trying to succeed at what it's doing. And then we get our first error here. We expected to find an element back button, but we never found it. So we haven't yet added a back button <coughs> that's gonna allow us to navigate back to the first screen of our app. So uh, in the green, uh, in test-driven development, it's a good idea, as I've mentioned on previous streams, to write only enough production code to fix the current error or test failure we're getting. So we wanna add this back button. So let's, let's go back, we've done this before, but let's we have plenty of time today. So let's take some nice small steps. We need a, a button with a test ID back button. Really, again, it could be any element that has a test ID of back button. Um, we're gonna use React Navigation because that's what we use for navigation, just whatever is the simplest way to do that there. So let's jump in there and we'll see uh, if and when I need to pull up the docs. So um, we've got our pages here, unit tests, we can hide those for now. On our restaurant detail page, we have our add dish button and we have our dish list. So let's just pop up at the top there. Um, we're gonna import our link. Um, I'm gonna put it up here. Import link from React Router. I think I said React Navigation because I've done a fair amount of React Native, but React Router uh, is what we're using here. And it is React Router, Router DOM that we wanna pull it in from. So we're gonna link. Uh, let's not link it to anywhere yet. Uh, let's take some really small steps back button and we will say back here so this should be enough now we have an element that should have a data test ID so that should be enough to get past the current uh, failure it's not gonna take us to the back the right page of course but let's let the test drive us there that time let's take some small steps so we rerun this test it reloads the page creates the restaurant Oh, okay, so check this out. So uh, the link component from React Router is actually saying we must specify the two property. So that's fine, we're gonna wanna do that anyways. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're just gonna link to the, the root of our app. That's fine, because we wanna go there anyways. We rerun. Yeah, and we can see we're taken back to the root of our app. And then now um, it's looking for a sushi place and doesn't find it. So the restaurant that we added on here, even that restaurant already is not being shown, let alone the dish that we were looking for. So we're now at the point where we're experiencing the same problem with the restaurant list page, where those restaurants that were stored in that state go away as well. So this is actually fine. This wasn't, what, wasn't the exact error we were looking for, but this is something that we want. Um, so this is driving us towards state management, that although we're going for to different places, um, on the screen uh, in different uh, routes within our app, we want to have some consistent state that's application level state that's preserved. And as you probably know, in the React world, there's a lot of different ways to do that. So in my previous live stream series where we did React Native, I actually went with MobX. Um, that seems like it may be potentially fairly popular in the React Native world, more so than in React Web. Um, and it was really great. So if you go to my YouTube page, I don't know the link to it. Let, let's find out what the link to it is. Um, if you go to my codiwrong.com is one way to get there. And then go to talks. It's loading. You'll see React Native TDD. 
and you can go into there. Let's even just click through and find out which uh, stream it is. Um, React Native TDD Episode 6 State Management. So that's where we're going to start to get into MobX over there. So if you want to learn about MobX and test driving MobX, you can check that out on the React Native stream. Just for some variety to avoid some duplication and for my own learning, we're going to use Redux. Um, Redux, of course, is very popular. Um, I haven't, well, I've been working more in Vue.js than in React, uh, so I haven't been in Redux as much. So uh, this is going to be a great exercise for us. And I have coded ahead a little bit to make sure this will be a productive time in the stream together. So let's jump into React. Uh, well, we're in React. Let's jump into Redux. So let's think at a big picture level of what we're trying to accomplish here. So we want to take this state that's stored in our restaurant list page and then in our, our restaurant detail page, these dishes, and we want to put this in a Redux store instead. And we're going to start out just storing it in Redux, um, just in browser, in memory. As a separate step, a little bit later, we're going to add in connection to the web service, partially because that can be sort of challenging to test drive out. Um, and it's going to be helpful for us to focus on that kind of explicitly. Uh, so let's, uh, this time I have not pre-installed stuff, so let's quit out of parcel, our bundler, and let's install some things. Um, we want to add, uh, let's see if I get these right on the first try. We want to add Redux, and then we want to add React Redux for the bindings there. And then I think, uh, let's see here. Think back to my screen, store restaurants and Redux. I'm looking at my cheater monitor over here to see what I've added in before. Let's go ahead and put in the Redux Dev Tools extension. That's really productive to kind of follow along and understand what's going on in Redux. It's one of the main benefits of Redux, and so I highly recommend if you're going with Redux to take advantage of it. So we'll add these packages real quick, and then let's think about our configuration here. Um, I had a big commit here, so it's a bit harder to follow. So let's create a, a store folder. And you'll notice here that I'm doing a little bit of initial setup here without test driving it out. And that's, I think personally that's fine. Our end-to-end -end tests will ultimately confirm if we have the state working the way we need it. Um, so I think before I do that though, I want to comment out this addition we've made to the test. And let's comment it out and make sure that the suite is running now. Oh, well, I closed parcel, so that, of course, is going to cause a problem. Let's restart it. And what I'm doing here is it's a good idea to refactor under green. And so we're making changes to our app, to the changes to the way the existing functionality works. And we want to do that under green tests so that they will catch anything that breaks. So I'm rerunning my end-to-end -end test here, and it passes. Let's run the whole suite, actually. Adding a dish and adding a restaurant are running, and they've both succeeded. And we'll run our component tests as well. And those have passed, so that's great. So now that we're under green, we can feel confident moving forward in refactoring our state storage. <coughs> and then we'll add our test back in. So this is a, a normal test-driven development workflow, is you get to the point, you add a test, you end up under red, you realize you want to do some refactoring before you move forward to implement this feature, and so you can back that test out. In our case, we've just commented it out um, so that you can refactor under green to have the confidence. This makes sure that as we're moving forward towards getting this thing passing, we don't break something else in the meantime. So let's continue with our refactoring, refactoring our state storage for our app to live in Redux. So I'm going to add a store folder and an index file in here. And let's see here, we're going to want in there. We want create store from Redux, uh, import root reducer from reducers. I think that's actually not the way. Yeah, no, that is the way I want it. Nope. I'm getting very confused. No, that is the way I'm going to want to do it. So import root reducer from reducers, create a store. the root reducer, and then we export it. Now we want to add in those dev tools as well. So let me just get the reference to make sure I type that in right. Uh, we import dev tools enhancer, and then we're going to go in. Uh, yeah, and then we just do this dev tools enhancer. I think that's right. We'll find out soon enough. Um, I think this is the basics of the setup for our store. All right, so now we want to actually have some storage going on to store this stuff. And this, I have a feeling, um, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to change this as we go, depending on how far we get in the stream today. Um, 
I'm going to first just add in the restaurants uh, to store things there. Um, we're going to get that working and then we're going to work on moving over the dishes because we have them stored in two separate components for now. So let's take some small steps to react, uh, to, to react, to refactor over towards it. Um, I'm just pulling up my reference here. Yeah, there we go. So I think I'm going to go ahead and create a folder here for restaurants. And this is just something that I like uh, coming out of my Rails background. I, well, no, I guess I shouldn't give Rails the credit for this. This is not the way they refactor their folders. But I do like to think in terms of uh, different entities or different models here. So restaurants is one thing we're storing, dishes is another. So let's store our restaurants in here. And um, we're gonna have actions and reducers. Reducers, plural, yeah, we'll do that. So let's think about our actions and our action creators. Uh, right now, um, the only thing we're doing in our app, you know, we could actually hold off on the actions. No, nah. yeah, let's hold off on the actions. Let's do the simplest possible thing first and just set up the reducers. So, right now, we only really have one reducer, like for the restaurants themselves, but I do still like this separation here. Export default function restaurants. So we have starting state, and let's just create initial state up here, burger place. Now remember, the way we're storing our restaurants right now is we're just storing one string to handle um, the, uh, the title of the restaurant because we don't have any additional data yet. That will most likely change coming up here soon. Let's do this. So the state starts out as the initial state. We take in the action, and then we're gonna good old switch on the action, action type. Um, okay, uh, and then right now we don't have any actions, so, action, so we're just gonna have the default, return the state. This is kind of like maybe not intuitively the way you'd usually work uh, working in Redux, but it's gonna work for us for right now. Um, so we just wanna return this state out of Redux to see that happening. Okay, we have that reducer. And then I had a root reducers file, reference from index.js here. I was importing a root reducer here. So let's set that up, which again is gonna be super, super simple right now. We're gonna use combine reducers, which is gonna feel like overkill for now. This is part of the deal of thinking ahead of how your application is gonna be structured to have a good structure, which I've done because I've pre-coded some of this and cheated to make sure we have a good stream experience. Because <laughs> otherwise it's gonna be a long four hours. So we're gonna import restaurants from restaurants reducers. So we get in our root reducer here, we import the restaurant reducer. And then we're just gonna export. The combined reducer with restaurants. And this is where we're gonna add dishes in a little bit later. So we're exporting that. All right, so this might be enough to get things started. So let's pop out to the root of our, the, our, our app component. Let's just close, there's a lot of tabs here. Let's get things wired up. We want our provider from React Redux. And then we want our store. We've got our store. And then we'll just wrap our entire app with a provider. And this is going to make the store available to any components that need it. Maximum line length. All right, well, let's indent this so we don't exceed that maximum line length. Maybe I'm crazy and old school for having a line length of, uh, of 80. There we are. Okay, so now we're, we've wired up our store, but no components are actually using it yet. We could actually, yeah, you know what, let's do it. Let's, we can start a parcel. We can make sure, even with this small step, that we haven't broken anything. And this can draw out if we have some syntax errors or import problems or something like that. So let's just rerun our tests here. We've added in our Redux store, but we're not actually using it. Here we just confirm that nothing's blown up, and it hasn't, so we're, we're in good shape. So now we can wire it up. So we've just stored in the restaurant so far, so let's connect to the restaurant list page here. Where are we on the cheetah monitor? All right, so we're gonna want uh, import connect. Remember, our goal is to get rid of component state here and pull this state from Redux instead because this is our persistent application level state that we want to keep access to everywhere. All right, we're going to remove the default export because we're going to um, 
manually export that a little bit later. We're gonna remove the state here. Um, and uh, yeah, let's come back. We'll change this uh, set state here in a second. So we've created our restaurant list page component and then we wanna wire it up. So down here we can create map state to props, state. We'll call it restaurants, even though it's still just the restaurant names. And now our default export is gonna be It's all very conventional uh, React Redux setup. So now we're connecting this, this restaurant's state to restaurant list page as a prop. So now we're gonna wanna reference it here. Um, handle add restaurant, we're gonna change that in a minute. Let's just get it rendering properly first. I guess this, the, the test will probably pass because we don't have the adding working properly. But we wanna pull restaurant names from the props here. And it's actually called restaurants. That's fine because that's gonna move us in the right direction. And then down here, we're gonna pass in restaurants to the restaurant list. All right, I think this might work. I think the adding will blow up, but I think um, everything else will, will work. I guess we're not really gonna see the evidence yet that it's working, but let's just run and see when and where it blows up. Let's go back to just running the add a restaurant spec because that's gonna draw out the error that we've gotten here. We can see here actually that it starts with burger place. So that, that is the data we pulled out of our Redux store. So that's helpful, that's, that's showing we're connected there. But things error out, uh, cannot read property restaurant names of no. All right, this is when we click save. And so I think what's happening here is the set state call is failing. So let's go ahead and replace that. Let's add in our action to add a new restaurant. Pull it up on a cheater monitor. I gotta do small commits so I can do this easier. All right, so we want restaurant actions here. We wanna create a new action, we'll call it add restaurant. Add restaurant singular, it's a string. And then now we're gonna have an action creator function, which is gonna be even more helpful later. function that takes in a name and we return type add restaurant name of the restaurant is name uh, what's this error here do we want oh we want a semicolon there okay cool so we have those actions there this add restaurant action is ready to go so we're now going to add this into the restaurant list page um, I think I'm going to need to go to the next commit on the cheater monitor yeah all right so in the restaurant list page, we're gonna import this action up at the top. Uh, I guess I like it right here. Import add restaurant from store restaurants actions. And then uh, down here, we're gonna do map dispatch to props. And then we're gonna pass that into our connect call. We're using the object form of map dispatch to props. Incidentally, related to that, the React Redux docs were updated just a few weeks ago, and I think they're really, really great. Um, they actually drew out um, the two different ways to map dispatch batch to props. Um, uh, more declarative and stuff like that. Well, I think that's different. Yeah, the two forms here. So this is something in the two books that I've read on uh, React and React Native, they did map this branch to props in two different ways. And so it was really great that the React Redux docs described it very, very succinctly. So if you haven't looked at the React Redux docs in a while, definitely check them out. And if you're newer to Redux like I am, they'll be a big help to you. All right, so we've got our map dispatch to props. So add restaurant is now available. So we can replace this set state call. Um, uh, with a call to um, add restaurant. So let's just do that here. Let's do this props add restaurant, new restaurant name. And I think this will get the test passing. So let's see if I've gotten it right. We have not. All right, what have I done? Oh, it's because I haven't written out the reducer yet. And so now is this something that I wanna unit test at this point? Hmm. I think I'm gonna hold off on unit testing for now. And the reason why is because once we get to the point of adding um, 
our API connections, the unit tests are going to change fairly significantly. And that's the point where we may more likely want to have that unit testing coverage. So I think for this time, I'm going to make the judgment call that I'm just going to drive these, this functionality out for now under end-to-end -end test. And that's the kind of judgment call you can make on a production application. When do you want to step down to a unit testing level? And when do you want just your end-to-end -end test to cover everything? So we'll stick there for now. And it's pretty simple in the reducers here. Uh, case, at, uh, I guess we want to can pull up a cheater monitor to make sure I get it right. I think we do want to import add restaurant from actions. We have add restaurant here. Then we're just going to return new state that is the name of the new restaurant and the existing state. And while we're at it, let's just clear out the initial state to an empty array because that's going to match more. Um, in fact, we can just inline that there. That's going to match more what the application would expect. So let's see if this passes our tests. Now we're handling the action. Yeah, and sure enough, Sushi Place is added onto the list. So let's step back and run our whole test suite to see if we're green. Adding dishes is fine. Adding a restaurant is fine. So this is great. So let's let's do one commit to add this stuff in. Um, we're gonna make a little more space here, and we're gonna handle um, our various review the changes we made. Now, now we don't necessarily want to, even though we've added this test in, because we've disabled it for now, we're not moving forward with it. We can just leave that disabled here, and we don't need to commit that just yet. So no changes to that file. All of our additions to the packages for Redux is good. Oh, this reminds me, before I pr proceed ahead, let's check the Redux DevTools extension and, and make sure it's working for us. So let's open localhost 1234. I think in Firefox I have Redux. Yes, I do. All right. So we have our state. Our restaurants are there. And if we add in a restaurant, it shows up and the action shows up. So this nice visibility that Redux gives us. So that's all working. So yeah, so we're good with Redux DevTools extension. It's working properly. We do want to wire up our app. Um, we do want to put the link in the restaurant details page. Actually, we can hold off on that as well because I don't think that's needed. Um, we put that in for that end-to-end -end test that we've added in. We don't need that yet. So let's hold off on that. We do want to connect our restaurant list page, move the state into Redux, pull it out in a different way, and then all of our changes to our yarn lock file, we want to connect those. And we want to add store. Cool. So we're just going to say we're going to move our restaurant storage to Redux. So this is a refactor that we've completed. Now let's move our dish storage over to Redux as well. Let's see here. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we now want in our store, in our reducers here, we want dishes as well. It's going to be fairly similar. And we, let's go ahead and add in the action this time. And this is going to be fairly similar to restaurants, so we'll just copy the code over. Add dish. We want an add dish action creator, and a dish has a name, so that's very similar. We're going to create a reducers file and copy over the reducers from restaurant, and just make sure that everything is nice and the same. Dishes. Dishes will start with an empty state, and then we'll add it in if we have called add dish. All right, and then in here, yeah, we're importing that. It's good. So let's just wire it up. We go to, we've got the new dish form, and then we got the restaurant detail page. All right, so we want import connect. We want to import add dish. And then we want to remove the state. Uh, we want to not export by default. And the handling add dish, we want to say this props add dish, new dish name. Still, the restaurant detail page will be connected to Redux and will ha ha handle dispatching that add dish action. Um, we're going to just call dishes instead of dish names here. Uh, we're going to pass those dishes to there. And then we just got to do our connection down at the bottom. 
we're gonna do map state to prop state turn dishes state dishes map this batch to props is add dish and that was imported above I think if I got that correct looks right export connect map state to props map dispatch to props restaurant detail page all right uh, oh it doesn't like the export what's the deal maximum length of line 8 of oh, 8 okay well does it want a comma in there all right well that's fine all right this might work let's see if we've done it right let's rerun our whole test suite and see what happens Cannot read property dishes of null. So let's see here. We've got, um, we're adding the restaurant, save new restaurant button, sushi plate. Hmm. New restaurant name, that is not interesting. I'm, I'm having a little trouble following this. So let's go back to our whole suite, make sure adding our restaurant spec still works something minor that it's breaking here and so it's good that we've taken small steps so we can kind of dig into it a bit more adding a dish so let's see Cypress nicely gives us visuals we can step through here so we're adding a restaurant we type in the new restaurant name we click save sushi place and it looks like it's hmm, it looks like it's trying to remove the modal but let's rerun to see Looks like things are erroring out when we go to this restaurant's sushi place uh, screen. Cannot read property dishes of null. So let's dig in there to see. Ah, uh, here we go. I changed this to this state dishes, but this needs to be this props dishes. Let's rerun that. So nice to have and then test. You can rerun every time after you make a small change to see, uh, to have a bit more directed feedback about what might have broken. So we're going to rerun our whole suite now to see that it's working. All right, we're good. So now let's make another commit to commit moving the dish storage over into Redux. <coughs> Again, we're going to skip over our changes to the adding a dish spec because we're refactoring under green right now. We're not moving forward to the test drive this new functionality. And then we're connecting. I guess I've got that link as well. So let me just edit this diff to remove that. I could have just stashed that. Um, we're adding a dish. We're not exporting the component or storing component state. We're calling this props add dish instead, pulling dishes from the props. We don't want that link yet. And uh, we're passing dishes there and we're connecting to Redux down at the bottom. And then uh, in the reducers, we add in the dishes reducer and then we add in store dishes, the actions then reducers. Move dishes to Redux. So now we're done our refactor. We've refactored our app so that our main uh, data storage happens in Redux instead of in uh, component state. So that's done. And so now we can go back, we can add back in that new test that we have and we can see test drive things out from there. Now that we've refactored to get ready to make this change more easily. Again, we're trying to con confirm the dishes are retained when leaving the page that we're on. And they may, they may actually already be so given the fact that we've switched over to Redux. So let's just check and see. And it looks like they've passed. So let's look at the adding a dish test in particular and see if that happens. Yeah, it looks like. So check it out. We can, because Cypress is so cool like that, we can actually interact with the app on the left-hand side. We can click back and go back and forth between the two different screens and see if there's two different sets of uh, dishes and stuff stored here. So we're going to commit this. To confirm the dishes are retaining the leading, leading page. And then we're going to say confirm dishes retain when leaving page. So that's some good progress. We've moved over. We've test driven switching our state management layer to move over to Redux. We've brought up a situation where we needed state management of some kind, and so we let the test drive us there. Um, let's see here. We got. I'm looking at my cheater monitor here. Uh, yeah, so we test drive um, something else out. I meant something about unit testing as well, though, here. So let's see. 
if that's the case. So here I did actually unit test out the store, but I think I still don't actually want to do that right now. Um, I think we'll save that until we've connected to the uh, to the web service. So there is another problem though that you might be thinking of. There's just a single list of dishes that handles everything instead of dishes being stored separately per restaurant. Um, and I forget how I actually implemented that. Huh, that's really interesting. Let me see here. Looking at my cheater monitor here. Absent dish name should not exist. Yeah, this is really interesting. I do not remember how I implemented this. But let's go ahead and test drive it, and I'll just kind of back myself into that corner, and then we'll figure it out. So before we move on to connecting to a web service or anything like that, things still aren't quite right, because we still just have a single list of dishes. And you wouldn't have to test drive it out that way in a real application, but we did it here. And so we want to write an end-to-end -end test that kind of gets us to the point of ensuring that things are stored the way we really want it to. Um, so let's say here, um, we have a test that says dishes stored per restaurant. And by test, I mean just a function here that's subdividing our large feature tour. So what do we want to do for di confirm that dishes are stored per restaurant? Well, we can add a new dish. Uh, I mean, add a new restaurant. So we're going to add a new restaurant here. Um, I think actually back here we're going to want to go back again just to end up back on the main screen after that previous function. We're going to add a new restaurant with this name um, and then we're going to click save new restaurant button. Then we're going to click on the restaurant name and then we're going to add a dish. Uh, well actually first what we can do um, we're going to look for an absent dish name. Make sure this other dish is not here. And so I think what we can do here to confirm this is we can do sci contains. So just find an L, look for an element on the page that contains the absent dish name, and then we can test that it should not exist. So we're testing that that absent dish is in fact absent. I think this is what's going to fail for us now, given our current implementation. Um, and just to make this test complete, let's go ahead and add a dish here. We're going to add a new dish name that we're going to save and confirm that we have this dish and we'll go ahead and go back to the main screen afterwards as well. So now we should pass in a restaurant name, absent dish name, and dish name. So let's say here, restaurant name two and dish name to mega burger. I don't know. Um, okay, so dish, make sure we want to make sure the dishes are stored per restaurant. We're going to pass it restaurant name two. The dish we want to make sure is absent. We want to make sure our burger place doesn't have a volcano roll and we want to make sure it does. It allows us to add a mega burger. So now let's rerun this test and see if we've got it failing correctly. Okay, so we've gotten to the point where we're confirming, we're checking to make sure the volcano roll does not exist for Burger Place, but in fact it does exist here. So we want to fix this. We want to fix this so that when we go to Sushi Place, the volcano roll shows. When we go to Burger Place, it does not. And let me just dig into this code over here that I prepared to be prepared, and yet... I do not remember, I mean, we could come up with something on the fly as far as how we set this up, but let's see if I have any existing thoughts to make sure it goes well. Yeah, I'm not sure if I ever got that working in this mode. That's really interesting. So we're gonna, we're gonna do this live, it's gonna be great. So how do we wanna store the dishes so that there's different dishes per restaurant? I think at this point that I'd like the separate restaurants and dishes reducers. I may regret that once we start connecting to the server, but let, let, let's drive this out to kind of get things, things stored the way we want. And maybe here, maybe I will actually unit test the dishes reducers because things are getting a bit more complex here. They're a bit more than trivial. And so just like um, pragmatically, it would be nice to have a unit test of, these, of this dish reducer to find out what's happening. So let's do that. Let's think about the interface of how we think we want things to work in the dishes. We'll create a new test. 
um, is going to be a unit test for um, store. And um, I think I'm going to actually need to change something to get that to run properly. But let's say um, dishes reducer spec.js. I don't feel the need to create a separate folder or anything like that. So um, let's let's figure this out. Let's describe dishes reducer. And how do we want to use this? What's the interface we want to use? Um, we're going to describe um, add dish. Yeah, we're going to describe the add dish action. And we're going to say it adds a dish for the specified restaurant. And we'll just kind of start that way and drive it out from there, see what we can do. So um, let's see here. I think kind of testing reducers like this, you can kind of just test the function directly. Um, that can be nice and straightforward. And I think that's going to end up being useful when we switch over to doing things asynchronously as well. Um, so let's set up a state. Um, for now, we'll just start it with an empty array. And we'll see if I want to change up the test and make it more robust later. So if we start with initial state, um, is that the way we want it? Well, let's see. We'll come back in a second here and find out. Um, we want to import dishes from, let's see, I got to do some, some uh, relative paths. One, two, three. Not beautiful. I probably should, maybe a little bit later in the stream, I can look up in parcel how to do absolute paths. So our store dishes. Reducers. I guess we're going to want the actions as well. Import add dish from actions. All right, so now we call dishes. We pass in a state. So this is just using the reducer function just directly as a plain old function. And then we pass in the action. And I'm just going to define that in line because I think that's fine. Type add dish. And so now we're changing the way this works. So we want to pass in a uh, restaurant name. I may regret how I've set this up, but we'll just find out and see. Restaurant name, let's, I'm going to define that up here. Const restaurant name, uh, sushi place. Dish name is volcano roll. Oh, no, I need an equals here. That's the restaurant name and then the dish name. I think I like it having that signature. So we disp we call this function, pass in this action, and then we want to uh, check the, the, the ending state. Expect state. So how do we want the state to be organized? Probably we want, um, I want it to be under a restaurant name, have a property there, and then we could say to equal dish name. So under the, under the restaurant name, under the state, we will have the name of the one dish. So I think that's good. So this is going to fail spectacularly. I think it's actually the test runner is not going to catch it. And let me rerun the test runner just, runner just to see. Yeah, sure enough, I don't see the list. Um, of, I don't see this new test stored on a list of tests. And if I use the just command to run all tests, we're going to actually have another problem. Because this is going to try to run every test under the root of the project that we find. Jest is going to try to run Cypress, and it's not going to know the CY variable because Jest is not set up to be able to run Cypress. We don't want it to. So this is something I haven't figured out perfectly how I prefer to set it up in Jest, but I do know a fix for right now. Um, so right, the way we set it up so far was for our unit testing in our package JSON, we called Jest and we passed it uh, test with double star and then star dot spec dot JS. So depending on the tool you're using. Sometimes double star will go multiple levels deep. I think it's actually supposed to, um, but it's not going enough levels deep here. So I think if we just say jest and run the test directory, I think that's gonna work fine. I think it's not gonna run our setup file. So let's just change that. We'll run our test again. Now we see the dishes reducer is included in the list. So that's great. And now we get an error here. Dishes is not a function. So I think I've forgotten to import it. Again, my linter, maybe I regret how my linter is set up and I want to do that. Um, 
Dishes? I imported that from reducers. Oh, you know what? I think it's the the uh, default export, so I think I want to import it like that. Let's see if that works. All right, so we expected volcano roll, but the result was undefined. And this is probably because we don't have, um, under the state, we don't have something like restaurant name. Incidentally, uh, this is probably actually supposed to be an object rather than an array, so we can have kind of string keyed stuff underneath it. Invalid attempt to spread non-iteratable instance. So now we've, we've broken things spectacularly because the given the existing reducer isn't set up to be able to do this. So let's change it up. Let's test try. And we've got our test. It's red. So let's fix one error at a time. First, invalid attempt to spread non-iteratable instance. Now, you know, this actually may not make any sense. We want the initial state to be an empty object. And then when we add a dish, what we want to do, let's just go ahead and implement it the right way. State. Uh, and then, uh, actually, you know what? Let's do this const restaurant name dish name equals action. So we're going to pull out the restaurant name and the dish name out of our past in action and then state restaurant name. Hang on a second here. Now I got to do this immutably. So I'm, I'm used to Vuex where we do this mutably. Mutably it needs to be immutable here. So we want to return a new object. We want to spread out the existing properties of the state object, but then overriding that, we want restaurant name, uh, the new the restaurant name key. We want a new value for the restaurant name key in the state. And the way we're going to do that is going to be an array. Um, we're going to spread any existing uh, state restaurant name. So any existing. Um, dishes that are in there, we're going to spread out and then we're going to add in to the front because that's the way we had it before, add in the new dish name. So immutably, that should handle what we want. So let's give it a try and see. Run the test. No, valid, valid attempt to spread non-iteratable instance. Okay, so we don't have the existing uh, dishes there. It doesn't, looks like that spread syntax does not work. What if I do... I give it a default state restaurant name or empty array. So that'll give it a default. Rerun that test. Okay, we expected volcano roll, but we still got undefined. So that's a little surprising to me. So let's see here. We start with the empty state. We pass in a restaurant name and a dish name. This is going to spread out the existing state, which is nothing. And then we're going to give the property for restaurant name. You know, I think what I'm going to do is actually, just in case I've gotten something wrong, well, I mean, clearly I've gotten something wrong, I'm going to do a console.log. I'm going to just log out the entire state as it exists. So let's see if that helps. Still an empty object. So action restaurant name. It sure seems like action restaurant name should be something. Is it taking, do I not need? It sure seems like I need to use that bracket syntax there. Um, you know what, let's, I mean, part of the nice thing about refactoring like this is when you're uncertain, you can kind of take a smaller step. So let's, let's do this. Let's say new, new dish, let's just do this one step at a time. New dishes equals, um, state restaurant name or empty array dish name. So that's the new dishes. And now we're going to return const, uh, let's do const new state equals spread the state. Actually, let's do it this way. We'll just spread the state that way. And then we'll say new state restaurant name equals new dishes. Let's see if that does it. And this may give us more in between points to log things out. No, it's still not coming out there. Interesting. Um, well, you know what? Let's just do this. Let's console log this. Well, let's console log out the restaurant name and dish name in case I'm doing something Clearly wrong here. Restaurant name is sushi place and dish name is volcano. So let's just say, let's log out the new dishes now. 
This is not planned, by the way. This is like real. Why is this test failing? Okay, so new dishes is the array with the volcano rolling. So that's perfect. Um, so let's log out the new state here. New state is an empty object. That's fine. And then let's log out the new state one more time with that new restaurant name added in. Oh, yes, yeah, so this state is fine. I'm just not, I, I'm not, I'm not thinking immutably. So what I want to do is to assign this. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to check the result. So let's run that and see what happens. So now it passed. So that's great. This illustrates one of the benefits of unit testing is that it gets you down to a nice low level. So in a much more granular way, you can see what's going on and get insight into your code. So now at the unit level that this passing, let's refactor it. First, we're gonna get rid of these console logs we don't need. And we can just rerun after that to make sure it still works. And then we can go through, let's try to kind of add one spread at a time here. So <clears throat> let's add the restaurant name with the new dishes in here directly. Rerun the test and it passes. So then let's just try returning this new state. It's fine. And then now the new dishes, we could actually do that in line as well if we wanted to. I think I actually like that as a separate step. I don't do so much immutable stuff that this is super obvious when I look at it. So I think this, um, I think this helps. Um, let's just make sure, I think it'll error out if we don't have this default here, but let's just try to see. So you can experiment with your code and then try small changes to make it as simple or clear as possible. So nice. All right, so let's think about this. You got our test. It adds a dish for the specified restaurant. Um, and so yeah, it puts the dish in there under the restaurant name. That's probably enough confidence to show me that, um, that it'll work. Um, I think it could be good. Uh, yeah, you know, that's probably good enough for now for unit testing level. So this is fine. Um, so let's think back at the end to end testing level. This might actually, you know, actually, no, this is not. We're going to need to uh, pull out the dishes in a different way. So let's run our end to end test and see it failing. I'm sure it'll fail in a new way right now. We need to update our components to pull out the Redux state in a different way, I think. Dish names map is not a function. All right, so let's pull that up just to visualize what's going on. Um, Pretty sure it should be in restaurant detail. Yeah, it's the dishes here being passed in. Um, dish names doesn't have a map. Okay, so dishes. So is this the way? Yeah. So I think what we need to do, we're, we're going to need to do, is get the dishes for this um, for this restaurant. So to do that, let's do this. Let's go back to the restaurant list page. Um, restaurant list, restaurant names. Um, we are linking to restaurants with restaurant name passed as an argument um, to uh, React Router. So let's check the React Router docs to see how we can get access to that restaurant name in the restaurant detail page. Because I'm not in React Router every day, so I need the docs to figure this stuff out. Let's check it out here. Nested routing. I don't want server rendering. Goodness gracious. Um, URL parameters. There we go. So route path order direct route path ID. So we have a match prop that's passed to it. Match params ID. So let's try that. Um, let's actually try just uh, putting it out on the page as a title. Like that would be kind of nice to do anyways. Um, and just to bounce around all the libraries, let's try a React Materialize to see if they have some kind of nice heading. Um, they may not. I think Collection might actually have a heading. Headers, Collection Header. Yeah, so let's try that. In our dish list, let's pass restaurant name. And let's say const uh, 
restaurant name. Is that how we have it set up? Link to restaurant name. Um, our app, restaurant's name. Yeah, let's just do name. <coughs> Pull out the name. Right, well, let's do it this way. We don't have to use all the latest syntax all the time. This props match params name. I'm not sure if that's going to do it right. But let's see. Let's just kind of see on the page itself. Dish names map is not a function. Okay, so we already have that. We still have that problem. So let's just we've got our dish list. Let's just remove the dishes for now. Yeah, dishes. Hang on a second. We have the title dishes. Collection header dishes. I'm I'm changing too many things at once here. Let's see here. Dish list restaurant name. I want to change my dish list component to take in a restaurant name prop, and the header will be the restaurant name. And now I still want to remove these dish items. Cool, so now the restaurant name is being passed in, so we can see that we can access that correctly. So let's go back to this. Now on the restaurant detail page, now that we have the restaurant name, we can create restaurant dishes. Um, and that's gonna be dishes for the restaurant name. So we take that dishes prop that we've gotten from Redux and we look up by the restaurant name. So let's see if that works. Dish names map is not a function. Oh, restaurant dishes, I'm not passing that in there. Hey, we need property length of undefined. Restaurant sushi place. Oh, I wonder if the space is causing a problem. Let's try it out by removing these dish items again. So sushi place is there. So let's um, let's log this stuff out. Dishes, restaurant name, restaurant dishes. And we'll see how that works. And we'll just do that. We don't we can do that here. Dish name is undefined, can't access this length property. Dishes is empty or a restaurant name is that. Restaurant dishes is undefined. Um so yeah, so actually if we do or empty array. That actually works fine. Okay, so that, that might that empty array there might have fixed it. So let's try this again. Let's rerun the end to end test. Huh. Oh, so okay, so now the, the new dish we've added isn't showing up in the list, and I think that's because we're calling the um uh we're dispatching the action incorrectly. So let's go down to that. Add dish, not just with new dish name, uh, we want um let me pull out the restaurant name again. And let's just, let's change this into an object because that's going to be useful. Restaurant name, dish name. So now our add dish action creator is taking in an object that has properties restaurant name and dish name. And in here, because we're not testing this, we need to put this in here. Restaurant name, dish name. And then we just pass restaurant name and dish name here. So let's see if that gets things working. Yeah, it's passing. Oh, and I think we've gone all the way through our test suite. So let's check it out. We've got our restaurants Burger Place and Sushi Place. Burger Place has a mega burger and Sushi Place has a volcano roll. So this is great. So we've managed to store different dishes for different restaurants. Let's rerun our whole suite. Make sure adding a restaurant works well as well. All right, cool. So this is great. So let's um, add these in and uh, I guess we can do one commit for all of these. So let's add it. 
So we have our end-to-end -end test here. Where we've added in the new restaurant and dish. We're testing the dishes are stored per restaurant. And then we've got um, the implementation of that function. Um, we fixed the jest command. That's fine, including this, uh, this test here. In our dish list, we're now taking in the restaurant name and dish names, and we're using the restaurant name for the header. That's nice for clarity anyways. Now in our, um, what is this? Restaurant detail page, we're calling um, add dish in a different way to add those new parameters. And we're pulling out the restaurant name and restaurant dishes. Those are going out there. And our dish, dish actions, our add dish action creator is updated to have those two properties. And now in our dish reducer, we're changing it to immutably add the dishes in organized by restaurant name. Um, okay, so that's all that. And then we add the unit test for the store. Just as a quick review, um, we don't have a unit test for the add dish action creator right now. And that's because it's so trivial here that I don't know that it adds a lot of value. It's like, yes, we needed to change our add dish um, function, but like it's just kind of a pass through really. So I don't find a lot of value for this to add unit test coverage. Um, this is why um, doing using code coverage metrics is not necessarily the most important thing in test driven development. It can force you to write tests that aren't a whole lot of value um, that don't provide you any extra confidence that you already have from your, your end to end test. So that's why I don't generally use code coverage metrics if I can help it. All right, uh, so we're gonna say store dishes separately per restaurant. Cool. So we've made some progress here. We've managed to kind of <coughs> refactor to use Redux for storing our state and we're storing our restaurant and we're storing our dishes in Redux. And we can actually see, let's visualize it with the dev tools here. Um, we'll reload our page, we'll add sushi place, go into sushi place, add California roll. And then if we pull up our Redux dev tools, we can see that our state is we have a sushi place restaurant and dishes under a sushi place restaurant, we have a California roll. So that's pretty sweet. This has gotten us in a good shape. So now before adding out any other features in our app, I wanna go ahead and move to the point of storing these in a backend API. You'll notice if I reload the app, um, the restaurant goes away and the dishes goes away. So we wanna start connecting to a real backend. And I'm gonna take a quick break for just a few minutes and when we come back, we're gonna get started connecting to an API. So see you in a sec. We'll go to the new temporary slide. Back in a bit. <laughs> 